There is so much to learn in markets and especially about using volatility indicators. And while this might be a rather advanced tutorial for some of you, what you'll find is that it's actually not that difficult to understand, specifically when utilizing some of the built-in indicators on TradingView, which come with your TradingView account, specifically this indicators button. If you're looking for videos about strategies or profiles or patterns, they are all on our YouTube channel. Check it out. But for for this video, we want to focus on a specific indicator called historical volatility. And our plan is to really walk you through this indicator list so that you have a definition and video walkthrough for just about all of them. We're going to go ahead and click the historical volatility button here. And actually, you can see our drawing moved up. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's actually delete this text as well, because we are now about to walk you through how this indicator works so that you can use it yourself. Now, we are looking at the year JPY right now on a one day chart, and we've got our historical volatility indicator open here at the bottom. What's rather interesting and never forget is that you can perform technical analysis on your indicators just as you would on the chart. And what you may notice right away is that volatility has been somewhat in a downtrend here since this spike back in December of 2022. So, what does that mean? What that means is that the range and sudden movements of this symbol, or for that matter, any symbol you pull up on the screen, we could pull up Tesla. Oops, we spelled that wrong. Tesla. Or perhaps it could be BTC USD. The historical volatility indicator will quickly calculate what the volatility of that symbol is and over a specific time frame, if it's been deviating suddenly or quickly from its mean price. And that is essentially the cornerstone of the historical volatility indicator. How fast is the symbol moving from its mean price? price over a period of time. So what you're going to want to understand here is this settings button. So we have BTC USD open now, and we're going to open the settings button to settings button to explore this indicator in more detail. Now, first of all, you see we have a length of 10. So that is 10 and you'll see multi time frame, time frame chart because our chart is set to days. That is 10 days. But if we wanted to look at a daily chart by while looking at volatility over a week, well, you'll see this instantly calculate because now what we've done is we have a 10 week volatility measure. So it's going to be taking the mean price over these 10 weeks and then quickly showing you the trend here based on its sudden movements. How volatile is it? The higher this goes, the more volatile the asset has been or could be. The lower this indicator goes, the lower the volatility has been or could be. So that is the initial way to think about this indicator. We're going to go back to a daily chart. So we're looking at a 10 day volatility for Bitcoin, but in fact, there's 30 days in a month. So let's do 30 day volatility. We have one day selected length is 30. That's 30 days HV historical volatility. We click OK. And just like that, we've created a chart here of Bitcoin measuring historical volatility. Now, there are a few key takeaways every trader or investor should know about using these indicators, which is that when there's more volatility, it generally means more risk, more fast action, more potential for sudden movements, larger than expected uh, moves to the upside or downside, which can be great for traders or terrible for investors, either or. The point is to ask yourself, how much volatility do you want to trade in? Are you looking to capture some really sporadic moves? Or are you looking to buy something or trade something or sell something that's a little more uh, uh, in a tighter of a range, let's say. And so what we see here is BTC USD. We have this 30 day historical volatility. And what you may observe here is that historical volatility has actually been in somewhat of a downtrend for Bitcoin. It briefly broke this trend line, but has come right back down through. Now you can make many different inferences from this analysis, just as you would on any other chart. And what you'll find interesting here is that 
Price has been going up. Do you see that? It's been going up quite a bit, but volatility has been going down. Well, remember, this is a 30-day calculation, so it's going to take into effect all of these movements over the last 30 days, and what's interesting to see is that the culmination of the last 30 days of trading, despite this up move, has still made the volatility measure go down. So these are the types of things that you can look for, is that Bitcoin's volatility is going down despite this up move. What does that mean? It could mean a number of different things for you, the investor or trader. Perhaps it means that the market's getting tighter. There's more liquidity. It's not making as big of moves within this time frame. Or perhaps it simply means that a big move is now overdue. Something might be brewing. These are different ways for you to think about using this indicator. This is specifically an educational video. It's for you to utilize and research and test. Because remember, your length is really going to determine a lot. You can see here this move here to the upside. Well, if we change this to a 10-day volatility, so rather than sort of you know showing the last 30 days, now we just see the last 10 days, you can actually see that there were a few large spikes that occurred. See these spikes? And only just recently in the over the 10-day calculation has it gone back down. So this historical volatility measure is a useful tool for you across many different asset classes to understand how volatile an asset has been. Another rather interesting thing for you to consider is the seasonality of this indicator. So let's say, for example, we go back to Tesla. Tesla reports earnings at specific points in time. What you could do is do a quick analysis. Let's say you're a short-term trader, so we'll keep this 10 days. And you could circle these spikes here and then try to kind of make a estimated guess as to why they happened. You could go back and read the news. You could also line it up with various earnings reports. And you can use this data as a way to prepare for future trading events. Well, this was... March of 2020, that of course was COVID-19 and that crisis. So this is 2021 here, March, and this is January, and maybe there's some sort of data point you could find. And what you could do, this is this is March of 2021, so watch what we're gonna do here. Maybe we want to investigate that a little bit further. So what we're going to do is find March, there's February, March, and put a line here. And now let's go research into last year's March, so March of 2023, and it's about right here. So perhaps nothing actually happened. Perhaps if there is no there is no data point to pay attention to, but or it got pulled forward because here's January of 2023. But perhaps this is the type of process you could do where you're looking for historical evidence of volatility, and this. Live example, we didn't quite find what we were looking for, but at least we're that much more prepared. We've done some research. We didn't just suddenly buy or sell. We look back at the volatility on a 10-day rolling basis to see if we're in the clear. Is there a possible event on the horizon? And actually, what you're going to catch here is it looks like there's an earnings report here in April. Why don't we move this line back to April and now we can start to try to figure out and maybe there's something in that zone that we'll want to pay attention to. We've got the earnings report. We've got our horse historical volatility here. And you can do this analysis and quite literally go through every earnings report and see how volatile it was before and after. You can just move your mouse to line it up with each earnings report. So this is the type of analysis you can do with the historical volatility indicator. And depending on what type of trader or investor you are, you may be searching for volatility, or perhaps you are searching for low volatility so that there's not as many swings or gyrations. In addition, oftentimes what you'll find is depending on the size of the symbol, Sometimes there's more or less volatility because these very large liquid instruments with proven business models sometimes have more liquidity and trading action. They keep the range somewhat tighter. Maybe there's more analysts covering these, these, these symbols, so there's not as much uh, opportunity to surprise. But maybe the more small market cap or smaller symbols might actually have more volatility because they're just not covered as much and they may you know do something that surprises surprises people one example maybe coinbase still a large company 
that's rather interesting. Actually, you can see here that volatility has been picking up. And by the way, pay close attention. This is moving similar to Bitcoin, but volatility is going up. That's because this move compared to its average price over the 10 days is an outsized move. And the volatility metric is going upward to illustrate that the simple fact is that there is more price action happening in this area than there was prior to it. And in the Bitcoin example, even though it was going up in a similar manner, it wasn't necessarily an outsized move relative to its last 10 days or maybe 30 days. But regardless, the point of us explaining that is to ensure that you understand how to use this indicator. It is called historical volatility. And of course, you can search for volatility indicators across TradingView and add any of these to your TradingView chart. So I hope this video helps you get started with historical volatility. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and give it a try.